lights. No lights. No lights. I was in San Francisco, midnight, around 2 a.m. when I got a text from Paul. And she was asking if she can call. And I said yes. And that's when she said that uh, we are eyeing you to, to join us to be part of the team to shoot Ignacio. I forgot about the jet lag. <laughs> I didn't sleep that night. I have not shot in Europe, so it is something that I know will be very, very different. Ignacio is the first one that I will try to shoot anamorphic. On the technical side, you know, I might say that there's this special lens I've been asking, and we ordered it two years ago, and it took the company two years to make it, and it's for another film. I guess it was meant for Ignacio, because Ignacio was the first film shot on anamorphic. I think not only in the Philippines, but in Asia, because there were only 11 sets made. 182, 115, 179, 86, When I saw the breakdown, 18 days, <gasps> I told Mama Ernst, are you sure about this? We went to Bilbao, so that's a much awaited prep for me to know the equipment, the tools, the toys I will be playing with based on the request that we made earlier on. When I got to the rental house, it was empty. And then they started showing me that, you know, can you use this instead of this? And then I said, okay, that's possible. That's okay. And then they were very kind in offering alternatives as what they call it. And so I said, all right, this is good. I mean, Beggars cannot be choosers. Take out the black, negra. Get the kid to negro. Because it's a period film, you are in a different country, there's a language barrier. Okay, good, perfect, thank you. We can understand certain words, and I'm sure there are a lot of similarities, but there are also a lot of differences in practices, in, in filmmaking, and as a culture. There are limitations, of course, that we know. We don't know the weather exactly. Calor. You want calor. Like calor. It's so hot. Beautifully hot. Okay. Not triple. But most of all is to be able to fulfill technically or visually the vision of my director and the creative team. What story we want to say with all the difficulties and the challenges that we will face, to me, that's the bigger gift. There's a certain way that Lee lights that it comes across as a real historical scene uh, rather than a recreation. I think that she puts in certain intentional imperfections sometimes. Um, sometimes she puts in just a little bit of an underlip thing on one side. That makes it feel like a real scene rather than, oh, we are putting on costumes. And <laughs> Cam A, and you go. Cam B, merchant. Paul is a very giving, giving director, and I didn't, I didn't want to add pressure to, to the mounting, you know, to the things that's on his mind. I'd like to think that I was, I would always tell him, focus on the performance, and the rest will follow. <laughs> Direct Paolo and Direct Lee's working relationship with everyone is very collaborative. Uh, I did not see a dictator on set, but there is a lot of uh, communication, a lot of collaboration, a lot of uh, checking with each and every one, the actors, the producers, the staff. Do you always do this? Beg all day? and then give the food to the patients at night? It is a compulsion. These patients are helpless. I can go out and beg, so I beg for them. The visual metaphor to interpret Ignacio's life is a challenge for me because he came, I didn't know his life before, honestly. I know about, I know of him, I know about him, but I didn't know what he had to go through. And so the challenge was to how, how do you interpret suffering? To me, is the central 
it's very central to the cinematic journey of Ignacio and to my personal journey, the importance of suffering, love, giving. How do you visually translate that? How do you technically translate that? And it has always been my challenge, and I think um, here it was put to test. I particularly appreciate how brave Lee can be about working with the shadows, uh, which I love. Particularly in the scene that we shot in a cave, where it's so wonderfully dark, and yet the story is very, very well told. You can, you can see what's going on in, in Andreas' um, expressions. It's just a masterfully lit uh, and shot scene, uh, I think. I want to be practical about it and my approach in cinematography also is that I believe in found items. I believe in what's in there, in what the space and the location and the set will offer. And then I just enhance it. Yup, from there. I think we benefited a lot from Lee's uh, experience as a cinematographer. No? It was very apparent the, uh, from the very start that Si Lee yung kayang kayang maglead dun sa crew. You? Can you ask uh, Gonzalo if it's going to blast outside or inside? But at the same time, she was also a breath of fresh air every single time. It was so easy to work with Lee. Um, so kami, nakakalma kami pagkasama namin siya. And her lighting is so fabulous. The first time that we, um, we played back a scene, Nung nakita ko talaga sa monitor, sata ko, wow, he made something really special. You, know, you can't always say, oh, I have a very authentic, appropriate fabric for the 16th century Spain. So, in the things that we really couldn't provide, she really helped with things like that. I mean, that, that for me, that purple fabric was just like, it was garish, but whatever. You know, and then all of a sudden it just kind of disappeared and turned a lovely <laughs> burgundy maroon. I don't know how she did it, but it was great. The dance sequence was quite, to me, was quite difficult because we had to change locations. I actually preferred that, but it was in a very narrow space. And it's a steady calm move. And there was nowhere to hide the lights. And if you have a steady cam and you are dancing and turning around, I have to pray that the steady cam operator would hit it right, you know, and show the lights that are being hidden on the side. It's just really making do with the small locations that we have, you know, where to mount the lights, where to make sure that it doesn't look lit. Because at the time, they only have candles in the sun. Other than that, nothing came out. Really, really nothing. There's no power, there's no electricity. Catalina's skirt in that ball scene, we really, we kind of engineered it to really swirl, you know, so that if she spun, it could, you could really see uh, the, the skirt move around and you have this really romantic feeling. And I think directly captured this really nice moment also when he lifts her and the, the, the dress goes around like that and her hair turns. It really is nice. And you can prepare all you want, I think, in pre-production. But when you shoot it and then you see the rushes, it's nice to know that you know, all these things pay off. And then you can, you can kind of see how each person in the, in the team was responsible for all of that in this one frame. But it looks... I mean, all the efforts just directed at one thing. Three, dos, uno! Ah! So, ako, gusto ko yung, yung clicking the, the system, working with directly. It really helped talaga na para maging uh, hindi ganung ka stressful yung trabaho. And, yun din, na parang we, I work really closely with, the, with directly. Na parang, yeah, just tell me na parang, what you can provide, what you parang feel like, uh, ito medyo kailangan natin madiliman yung area na to, kasi hindi masyadong full yung setup doon. So yun, you just tell me what you think and you know, let's know. Like, it's, a, it's a really col collaborative 
work. Yeah. Pamplona is lost, Loyola. I say we fight. I don't want cinematography, you know, to be very obvious. I want it very unobtrusive, to be a tool of the director, to tell the story. Other than that, it should not be seen, you know, but helps to lift the emotion of the scenes and to tell the story. To me, that's the central point of, of everything. Muchas gracias, everybody! We're done. <laughs> Good morning. Oh!